These two cards are out now, so welcome to the Snake Eye Fire King decklist and fundamental combo video. Let's get started. To kick it off, let's start off with the main deck. We have two copies of Snake Eye Poplar. As I mentioned earlier, this is the in-depth version, so I'm going to explain the cards and their usefulness. And for this deck, everything essentially does two things, and aside from being a free summon upon being added to your hand, on the normal or special, you get to add a Snake Eye Spell Trap from your deck to your hand. That's going to get you the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye, which gets you any level 1 Fire Special summoned out. But the reason why this is even better is because when you send this card to the graveyard, you can target a fire monster, which includes itself, and you can put it into your spell trap zone as a continuous spell. And that helps facilitate a lot of the cost from the Sinful Spoil or the Snake Eye packages. And this card, because it can special summon itself out, that's why Bonfire and Snake Eye Ash is just a really ridiculous card to pop off the entire deck into a one card combo. And that's why this deck is insanely powerful. You can even play through Droll. I'll show you that in a second. But next card, we have Snake Eye Ash. Three copies of this. This is one of your key starter piece, aside from Poplar. Poplar is a weaker one, which is why we only play two. This one, you have to play three. It's so good because on the summon of this, you could add a level one fire monster. It doesn't have to be Poplar. If you already use Poplar to get to Snake Eye Ash, and uh, for some reason you use Bonfire to get there, you're just looping around. You can still normal summon out that level one fire, which could be the legendary Fire King Ponyx and then you still get all your engines going that way. You have to work around your lines. Not everything's gonna be able to play optimally, always judged by the situation. Now that's just part of what Snake Eye Ash has to offer. The second part about Snake Eye Ash, and like all the other Snake Eye trees, which is Ash, Oak, and Birch, uh, you can send itself and another face-up card uh, from the field to the graveyard, and you'll be able to special summon a Snake Eye monster from your deck or in your hand which helps you get out the Flam Bird Dragon. But in this case, there's two cards that we can go for that I typically like to go for. Snake Eye Oak and the Flam Bear's Dragon. Now, Snake Eye Oak, consider as a way to extend to get back some of your cards that are banished or in your graveyard, as it is a graveyard special summon or a banished special summon for one of your level one fire monster. Now, you can either add it to your hand as well, so that's also a possibility. Uh, if you add it to your hand, such as your Poplar, you can use that to kind of kick off Poplar. Now, on the other hand, of course, it still has the same effect as Snake Eye Ash, which allows you to send itself plus another face-up card to the graveyard and then you get the special summon a snake eye from your hand or deck which is typically going to go into the flam bears dragon and now for flam bears dragon now aside from the basics that we know about this card which lets you special summon back two level one monsters from your graveyard that part's really good just remember that that particular effect doesn't target which is kind of ridiculous but it also allows it so that when your opponent removes one of them and you only have exactly two you don't actually get to special summon anything because you can't fulfill that effect anymore. So you know, just keep that in mind. But when you do get the special summon, it's still a wonderful card because this can be used offensively and defensively because you can take one face-up monster in the graveyard, either graveyard or on the field, and push it into a spell trap zone as a continuous spell. And that allows you for non-destructive removal that also does not allow the resources to recur. Unless you're playing Snake Eyes, you're not going to be able to really use those as cost. So just be very, very careful about that. Okay, so that's what we're considering here. Oh, we do have one Dia Bell Star, uh, just so that we can play the Wanted Package to lead into some of these plays and give the spell cards a little bit more synergy so that you can turn them into resources as well, such as getting the additional draw, getting the additional level 1 search, and that's through the effort of Dia Bell Star. This is the Fire King engine that I'm playing. This is the monster lineup, where it's one Sacred Fire King Gabrunix, one Legendary Fire King Ponyx, one Aftara, and three copies of High Avatar Kirin. So everything here, as mentioned before, they do two things. Number one, the Ponyx is here to set up your Fire King line so that you can have access to Fire King Island leading to the Gabrunix. Gabrunix leads to setting up the Kirin, and also in the graveyard provides you follow-up to get a second Kirin into the graveyard destroyed so that you have a follow-up with destruction. And that's why this is here. And it provides you with a solid 2700 body that gets larger. Aftara typically is going to be destroyed to summon back the Kirin for the most part. But alternatively, in a case where you have a really strong hand with a ton of special summons, you can burn your normal summon on the Aftara, providing you with a level of protection to make sure that the other lines are going to go through even smoother. All right, so that's essentially what they do. But the key monster here has to be the Kirin. This card, if you're going to be playing the Fire King Snake Eyes, this is a card that you need to master because it does so many things and it offers so many different lines where the basic battle phase of this card, by just summoning out this card, by destroying a fire monster and summoning out, and you're having a tough time dealing with your opponent's cards, 
if you realize that, hey, most of that stuff can't be answered in the damage step, then you just crash your monster in. That's going to trigger in the graveyard, helping you summon perhaps your Garunix out of your graveyard, perhaps summon another card in your graveyard and maybe just get a bunch of monsters. And then you can swing through your opponent that way with minimal disruption, which is great. And then you get a follow-up line. Alternatively, you can also use Kirin to destroy one of your own monsters when it's being targeted by Imperm or Effect Failure during the activation of those cards. So this card is just really, really versatile. Essentially, most people compare this to Shivara, but it's just Fire Shivara, uh, just ridiculously powerful. Next is my hand trap lineup. I'm just gonna get the infinite imperms out of the way. I might switch these out for DD Crows if DD Crow proves to be more useful. In a more competitive setting, I think hitting cards in the grave are just more important because you're gonna probably find yourself playing against a lot of mirror matches and imperm sometimes just really doesn't do enough. Uh, but in a more generic local sense where not everyone's playing Fire King, Snake Eye, it's pretty good. As for the rest of it, I am playing a package of cross out. So I have one Nibiru, I have one Effect Veiler. Maybe I should amp this up as well. But as for the rest of it, it's going to be Triple Ash. And it's going to be Triple Droll. Droll is just really important. It shuts down the second engine for the Snake Eye Fire King, which lets them either go into the Fire King stuff or not, which reduces the amount of follow up that most people have. But essentially, Droll and Lockwood is just really, really good in this format. And most of it is just really hand trap based anyway, which is why I'm choosing to play one and one for now. We're going to see how I alter these numbers in case some of these hand traps are just not good enough. Uh, then I'll just rotate them around. But because it's kind of tier zero esque right now, it makes sense to play a cross out package where even cross out can, you can hit some of the main deck monsters. Like hitting a Kirin today was really, really good because that prevented the monster from coming out, didn't get my stuff destroyed, and they have to eat the rest of the board uh, the natural way. So that's also pretty nice for me. But that makes up for the entire monster line and the triple imperm. So for spells, we have the Fire King package, Sanctuary, Island, and Skyburn. I don't miss the second island, but you can play one if you want to, if you want to see the Fire King package. Sometimes when you don't have the Fire King package, it doesn't feel as strong. You are shorting yourself of one particular line that does naturally synergize with the rest of the deck, but it's good enough in my case because I'd rather have the Snake Eye cards over the Fire King cards. Uh, it's nice to have Fire King cards, but it's definitely not a necessity. It definitely solidifies and reinforces what you already have with the Snake Eye stuff, making the disruption very, very difficult, especially with all that stuff coming from the graveyard. Into the next package, we have the Sinful Spoil package. I play two copies of the Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Let's do like this. Yeah, sometimes I just need something to search. Some people are also playing uh, the one that pushes a card into the back row. That one's also kind of cool too. And I play Triple Wanted because it's wanted is just for consistency. The reason why this deck is also really good is because the consistency level is through the roof. And I play three copies of Bonfire. And that makes up for the entire engine. This deck is really a very small and consistent deck. And finally, to close out the deck, to round it all off, we have the cross out package that you guys always give me crap for playing, especially in Rescue Ace. And we have the Call by the Grave. I don't know about you, but cross out winning so many games in a format where you start to understand, the more you understand what the format has to offer and how they counter you, the stronger cross out will be if you find that overlap. In this case, in a tier zero format, it's kind of more forgiving to play this card because you can also hit a lot of stuff in the main deck. And again, everything needs to be serving two purposes. If it doesn't serve two purposes, you're not playing this deck right. But this is not like Branded Chimera level. Branded Chimera level is just different because they use cross up just to revive cards as well. It's different. But anyways, Call by the Grave as well because Call by the Grave can help you deal with a lot of the Grave interactions. There's at least three Grave interactions set up in the mirror match and whether it be protecting yourself against Hand Trap or Promethean Princess or Amblo Whale. Well, I guess Amblo Whale, you have to preemptively hit it anyway. There's just so much this thing can deal with. And you can even use it to take out the Garunix in the graveyard that leads to this pop, the, you know, the Kirin. There's just too many things. You might as well just get rid of it. And that's why this is good. And I also play DD Crow on my side. For the extra deck, we're gonna showcase it in sequence of what you're probably gonna see in order, starting with Link Rebo. Poplar will link summon into Link Rebo, putting Poplar into the spawn trap zone and Link Rebo on the field as well. So you have two cards to pay costs for Snake Eye and Sinful Spoil cards. Then we have one Salamine Great Sonning Wolf, one IP Mascarena, and one SP Little Knight. The Sunlight Wolf is there to help you get rid of two monsters, which are fire. Typically, it's going to be one Flam version. Flam version will trigger into the arrow, getting you one of those monsters into the arrow, getting you back your Kirin, your Ash, or Snake Eye Ash. And then there's the IP Mascarina. You're going to summon this card as part of the combo eventually. And then once it hits the grave, right, if you have a Flam version on the field, you're going to put the IP Mascarina on the opening turn into the back row. Then there's SP Little Knight, which is 
typically IPs follow up. Then we have the additional level two package, which is the Dark, the Hita, and the Nightmare Phoenix. Dark is just dark. It's just there to help you get an extra body for the Dark players. Hita in this particular format is going to be extremely powerful, especially if your opponent has already provided you with a bit of setup where you can take their Snake Eye Ash, their big cards, and essentially get yourself your own setup. And why set up your own cards when your opponent's playing a mirror match, right? And then you can also use Nightmare Phoenix to help you link down in case you're stuck under the Promethean Princess, but also provides you with a fire uh, spell trap removal. And then we have the Dekotaka Heat Soul, uh, the two Promethean Princesses. So Heat Soul, quite simply, is there to just provide you with a draw when you have the uh, Salamangor, Salamangor Wolf, and the Link Karibo, the easiest way there. But then there's the Promethean Princess. Why is this one at two? Oh, you're just flexing? No, because if you're going to be playing against a Horus player, they're going to Buzz King and rip this card out, making your life really hard to play, as this is one of your best follow ups and provides you with the Flamberge resummon play. For Link Force, we have Amble Whale, Raging Phoenix, Zalantis, and Appaloosa. For the two Fire Link Fours, remember Promethean Princess locks you into fire, so you need something to link up, otherwise you're wasting all the extra body. And so Amblo Whale, when you go first, this one will provide you with interaction during your opponent's turn if your opponent plays into it, or you can trigger it yourself by destroying Amblo Whale and you can play with it in the graveyard. Raging Phoenix is there for the OTK with Zalantis, as when this card is in the graveyard, if you destroy a fire monster, you're going to be able to summon it back out. And you just go into Raging Phoenix into Zelantis. As long as your opponent has a monster on the field and cause them to special summon it, you're going to be able to special summon out the Promethean Princess, which destroys one of your own fire monsters. Okay, so as long as you have another fire monster with this, you can destroy your own fire monster and then destroy that card. Not only that, you summon this next to the Zelantis arrow. And then, because the fire got destroyed, uh, you get to summon out your Raging Phoenix, targeting that card and getting an attack boost, pushing you over 8k damage. And Appaloosa is Appaloosa. It helps provide you with Monster Negate and just kind of stun your opponent out. And the last card we have, Eternity Garunix, Hyang of the Fire King. This card is mainly there to mass board wipe your opponent. It's really easy to get two fires with the Fire King line and uh, also gives you a spell trap removal. Well, before we continue, check us out at mstmerch.com for your card game essential needs. I know you guys have been eyeing these foil sleeves for some time now, if you guys haven't seen them already. These are the LT Instinct and the LT Eagle. Here's the shine pattern on them. Uh, but yeah, these are the OG MST ones. I hope you guys have these. I know you guys are the OG and it really showcase that you guys are a fan of MST TV. And of course, for foil sleeves, they can get scratched up. So we do also offer over sleeves to protect protect your foil sleeves and just to showcase that they work for the Yu-Gi-Oh size sleeves. So here you go. And for the carbon series, we have the whites, the pinks, the blacks, the whites. All of these, we sell them in multiples and big bundles so that you can get them at a big discount, but they have the smoothest shuffle feel. They remind a lot of people of the classic PC white, the closest thing to it. So I'm really glad that we have these available for you. Box dividers. You may have heard me mention about box dividers from time to time. Now, when you're sorting your collection, you have like these little tabs. I made these way back in the day. I found these like kind of in my trash bin. And yeah, I kind of got rid of these because I designed these ones myself, which are just bigger. If I could do a little size comparison they stick out i don't want them to get buried in my collection and i have horizontal boxes as well so you can actually rotate them and then you can use them as a horizontal box divider as well you have the letters right there and some people are like well just fit in the top loader you're right you could fit them into a top loader see and now they're sticking out even more and they're perfect fit for a top loader just in case you want to sort your collection that way and have everything stick out and and that was the quick demo thanks for checking out msdmerch.com and uh, let's get into some of the combo lines. So for the combos, I'm going to showcase one fundamental combo that hopefully you guys will take and branch out and readapt your lines based on the situation. Then I'm going to show you guys two draw lines and finally what happens if you get Cosmic Cyclone and evenly match in the exact same turn, killing your Fire King Island. That's what we're going to showcase today. For the basic combo, we're going to start with the Snake Eye Ash line, starting off with Bonfire, adding a snake eye ash into our hand a lot of people are doing poplar but i think ash is probably the better line a uh, normal summon out the ash ash effect now get the poplar now you have an extra body and we have the poplar effect special summon from our hand affect the poplar on summon add the original sinful spoil snake eye now we're going to link off the poplar first into link karibo poplar effect target itself put itself into the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell activate the original sinful spoil snake eye sending the poplar into the graveyard and summoning out our legendary fire king ponix ponix effect add sanctuary but if you already have sanctuary or island then add the sky burn in which case we're going to add sanctuary and from sanctuary we're going to activate it and put the fire king island 
Now from here, we're, I'm going to start off with the Snake Eye Ash, getting rid of Link Rebo, using that effect to get the Flamberge onto the field, just because that's summon number 5. If they nib me at this point, at least I still have some level of follow and my monsters can come back. Uh, next, now we're going to activate Fire King Island. We're going to destroy the Ponix and get the Garunix. Garunix effect, we're going to destroy the Kirin. Kirin effect, get back the Ponix onto the field, so we're just getting a bunch of free cards at this moment. So we've loaded most of our field here now. We're going to now Link Summon these cards out into the Sunlight Wolf. The reason why I chose to use the Ponix is because now I have three level one monsters in the graveyard, which allows for you know a little wiggle room against DD Crow. Effect of Lambert's Dragon, we're gonna summon back. It honestly doesn't really matter, but Populous, maybe an Ash, cool, into the Sunlight Wolf zone. Sunlight Wolf effect on activates. We're going to use that to grab a Avatar Kirin into our hand. And from here, we don't want to go into Promethean Princess to lock ourselves into fire just yet, so we're going to link into our IP Masquerina first. And then we can take the Poplar and link that away into the Promethean Princess. Now we're locked under fire. From here, we're going to activate the Bestower of Flames, summon back our Snake Eye Glamber's Dragon. And now we're going to just link these away into our Amblo Whale, activate the Flamberge Dragon, put the IP Masquerina into the back row. And during your opponent's turn, during their draw phase, you can push the IP Masquerina back out onto the field, giving you a lot of disruption. It seems unseemingly, but uh, you have the Promethean Princess as graveyard follow-up. Amblo Whale in the graveyard is also follow-up. Kirin can force a lot of the triggers, or half of your triggers, and you also have Garunix in the graveyard, which can load up another Kirin pop and play. And uh, that's a lot of cards that we just got just from playing one card. Okay, so playing around Droll, you can have Ash or Poplar as your opening play, and it'll still be okay. So let's start off with the Ash one. It's going to be pretty quick. Normal summon out the Ash, effect add Poplar into your hand, and uh, through that, you're going to activate Poplar, but they're going to chain Droll and lock right now. Droll is now active. You're going to special summon out the Poplar. You can't add the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Link away the Poplar into the Link Karibo. Poplar effect, put it itself into the spawn trap zone, activate Snake Eye Ash, sending away the Poplar and itself, so you can keep the body now, the body is what's important, and we're going to summon out, instead, a Snake Eye Oak, Oak effect, summon out your Poplar, or whatever it is, doesn't really matter, and then you Snake Eye Oak's effect, send away these two, and you can also just work your way into a Flambear's Dragon. From these two monsters, you can help recover some cards if you need to, but I like just going to IP Masquerina from this particular point, going to IP. Flambear's Dragon now has plenty of options, so you can at least dodge a Crow plus Drone Lockbird, essentially, and Special Summon out two of your monsters, okay? So now that you got two of your monsters Special Summoned out, you can link away the IP Masquerina into your Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess revives your copy of Flamberge. Flamberge effect, put the IP Masquerina into the back row, and then you can link away your Promethean Princess into an Amblo Whale. Essentially, you just played around the entire droll. You didn't need to go into the deck, and you still end up with the same board. Draw a face, push this out, and you stop Promethean Princess as a way to disrupt your opponent. You're getting back a lot of cards if you get the Flamberge into the graveyard, so when you make an SP against your opponent, that's really good. It's in the graveyard, summon back Promethean Princess, or better yet, summon back another IP again, you know, if you want to. It's just a lot of options. All right, Poplar, it's your turn to eat the droll. You know, don't let me down. You got him, boss. Okay, I'm going crazy. Normal summon out the Poplar, a Poplar effect, add uh, the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye, and bam, you get slammed with a Draw and Lock Bird. Okay, well, we're going to link away this monster first. So that we go into our Link Karibo. Link Karibo, a Poplar effect, put itself in the Spawn Trap Zone, activate Snake Eye, put that away, and now we summon out Snake Eye Oak. Oak effect, summon back the Poplar. All right, see, it's all fun and games. Activate Oak's effect. Uh, we're going to send those to the rear, summon up Flamberge. Now we're going to link summon these two into our IP Masquerina. Uh, the effect of Snake Eye, Flamberge is going to summon back the these two, the Poplar and the Oak. Uh, take the Oak and whichever monster you want, summon out a Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess can now summon back our Flamberge Dragon. And Flamberge can put the IP Masquerina into the back row. And now we can take these two, link them away. And we go into Amblo Whale. And I guess during their draw phase, push this back out. And you still have an SP disruption. You have a Promethean Princess disruption. And if this does land into the graveyard, you do get your Oak. And Oak will get, uh, well, I don't know what Oak's going to give you. Poplar is going to give you another card. So still, this is where we are. 
I'll finish off the combos with, I guess not a combo, but a demo. We have Cosmic Cyclone evenly as the counterplay to this. And so they want to use the Cosmic Cyclone on the Fire King Island and not the IP. So yeah, the decision tree led to the Fire King Island being the priority because I took Fan Burst Dragon to summon out the IP. And in draw phase, they wanted to blow it up so that you don't get it. But you don't do it here because this is what happens. Activate Cosmic Cyclone, banish the Fire King Island in draw phase. Everything gets destroyed due to Fire King Island and that's going to set off a whole slew of triggers. So we have the Amble Whale and the Flam Burst triggering. Amble Whale is going to get the IP back because it got destroyed and Flam Burst is going to summon two. And depending on what's in the graveyard, this is where it gets really scary. We can summon back Ash and Oak or Ash and Poplar. Ash and Oak a little bit more preferred if you already have Poplar in the graveyard. So let's go for Ash and Oak, okay? Ash effect, Oak effect. Oak summons back the Poplar onto the field. And Ash is going to add Snake Eye Ash into your hand because apparently Ash can add Ash. Cool. And then a Poplar effect goes off and that's going to add the other copy of the original Simple Spoil Snake Eye into your hand. So that gives you the proper follow-up if you need additional cards. So this is going to set off Ash into Poplar again on your own turn. So this is your current hand now. So you're guaranteed a card that you can destroy for your Kirin. Now they want to go into, you know, they call it battle phase, so they force the IP Masquerina. There's two lines you can go into from here. You can go straight into a Fort Material Appaloosa and just banish everything but the Appaloosa. Or you can go for SP Little Knight if you want a little more versatility, if you're still too worried about their hand. But in which case, if you get into this position, then you can take SP Little Knight plus one of the monsters you want to keep. And from there, they're going to come back and give you a follow-up play, which is also pretty nice. That's not bad. Uh... Yeah, so these are the options that you have to answer for the evenly match. It's kind of funny. And that is it for this Snake Eye Fire King deck list and fundamental combos and ways to play around Droll. If you guys enjoyed it, smash that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell. We're almost at 100k and I got more stuff to showcase to you guys, more decks to demo. We got U-Bell, which I'm surprisingly interested in, and we also have Voiceless Voice coming up, so don't want to miss out. And this deck, I have to say, is really, really good. Everything doing more than one thing per play does really put people behind, especially when they're using hand traps. So just be very careful about that. This deck's only get more and more complicated. The lines are going to be more complex. And uh, we're going to see who's going to come out on top. And uh, well, that's all I got for this one. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you all in the next one.